Hello dear friends, I am full of some holiday cheer and hopefully soon some really good food as well as I meet up with some chosen family and friends to celebrate the winter holiday season just by kind of hanging out, having a, maybe a nice feast of some kind, possibly exchanging some gifts, who knows? Whether you're celebrating Hanukkah, which just passed us, or Christmas, Xmas, Kwanzaa, or maybe, you know, some kind of Festivus. Isn't that from a Seinfeld episode from forever ago? Maybe I'm showing my age, but that's okay. Oh, I know what I'm missing. That's better. And myself being me, I'll be running a festive holiday game next week. And so let's talk about some ideas around that. It could be something you work into your existing campaign or a one shot like I plan on running. We can talk about some festive magic items, some magical cantrips that can fit the season. We can talk about villains and maybe the lack thereof. And finally, how to celebrate a generic wintry holiday and some other homebrew things that I have found online from the very clever community that's out there. Throughout this video, I will be referencing homebrew. I will put everything I have talked about down in the description as carefully labeled as I can so that you can just pick it up and run with it. And if you're in the giving mood, some of them will allow you to pay what you want or to pay a fixed price on various different websites in order to support these homebrew creators. Let's jump in with my favorite magic item that I have come across in homebrew, and it is the cup of infinite hot cocoa. I already hear my friends telling me, oh, but of course you chose the cup of infinite hot cocoa. You're biased. You drink hot cocoa like all the time, even in the summer. And to that, I say, yes, yes, I do. I love hot cocoa and I will drink it all the time if I please. And much like the decanter of endless water, which in theory wouldn't be game breaking, but we all know how players be. The cup of infinite hot cocoa can surely have some game breaking potential, but most likely not. It should be fine. But if you are looking for something with a little bit more spice to it, then consider the deck of merry things. All of the chaos of the standard deck of many, but a little bit more merry in it. Of course, you can also reskin any of the existing magic items that are in the game to be a little bit more appropriate for your world or the current state of the very wintry holiday world, of course. Consider a plus one longsword that you reskin into a very sharp and pointy candy cane. Why not? You're the GM, you can make it be whatever you want it to be. Or give your players some kind of an ability to summon a gingerbread golem, perhaps. Ooh, that's exciting. In fact, let's not just talk about magic items, let's also talk about some magical cantrips that could fit the season. I think one of my favorite from the cantrips of Festivus is the magic mistletoe. It's mostly a pun. It does not fire anything directly, but assuming you have already discussed consent with your players, you can have mistletoe appear above an NPC or another player. And assuming you've discussed consent and charisma checks are rolled, you might have a very lovely role-playing moment. The next two magical cantrips come as a duo, as they kind of oppose each other in a delightful way. It is holiday cheer. You can instill the gift of the season, as it were, some excitement for holiday cheer in those around you. Ah, but it can be countered with a good old humbug cantrip. And a humbug can be countered itself with more holiday cheer. Consider if your players can maybe overcome a nice humbug or vice versa. It is a classic in order to bring in a villain into your world. Um, in this case, most likely Santa Claus with all of their elves who are maybe 
artificers? Have you considered something from folklore such as Krampus? Do your research, try to represent these folklore tales as well as you can. There are many different movies that have done a hit or a miss job of it, but it could be some really fun inspiration. Alternatively, you could consider a very Grinch-like villain, one who wishes to ruin the festivities for everybody else, and your players will have to somehow defeat this Grinch-like individual in order to save the feast or the festival or the holiday or whatever it happens to be. Maybe this is the one time you don't need a villain directly this is the holiday season, and there's plenty of roleplay potential to just be merry, spread joy, help with the feast, preparing the party that everybody's going to be going to, really lean into the charisma, maybe puzzle solving and survival of going out and hunting, gathering, meeting with people, bringing the people that are too scared or antisocial to come to the party to have them come out for this very festive time. It could be a really delightful game to not have a villain directly, but to focus on the season. The season, the holiday, the generic wintry time where we all celebrate and eat food. What should we call it? Well, if you go with something like Christmas, Xmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, be sure that you can do it justice and really represent it in a positive and good light. If you don't feel like you can do that or you are the appropriate kind of person to achieve that kind of a goal, then maybe reconsider. Or just stick with something a little bit easier, a little bit more generic and fun that just fits with the holiday theme in general. Why not make up something? Festivus. Okay, again, that's from a Seinfeld episode, but you could use that. Why not Winter Miss? And some other ideas from the homebrew community. The Black Midwinter for a really dark kind of game. Kringle Fest. The Feast of Earth, which is um, one I'll be doing. Wait, the Feast of Hearth. That's it. The Feast of Hearth. Winter's Splendor, which is a lot of fun. You could take a lot of different wintry, Christmassy kind of words and shove them together to come up with your own. Could be a lot of fun. Maybe make a little list and come up with your favorite. And I want to thank you all for watching this very special and first episode of Fatal. And I want to wish you all a very happy Cobalt Eggmas.